back to my channel. My name is Elena and this is Elena in Life. If you saw from the length of this video, this is going to be a long one. So definitely you're going to want to get yourself a drink, a snack, a cold towel, because we are going into Jamaica. Okay, this is Jamaica, specifically also Negril 101. I've had a lot of comments that are saying, Hey Elena, can you tell me how much you spent while you were there? How do you make friends? What do you eat as a vegan? Why did you choose to go there? So if you are interested in going to Jamaica and staying there for an extended period of time like I did, then you will love this video. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to me to see how long I can make this traveling thing a reality. Go ahead and turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified when I head to my next place and like it if you like it. And obviously these opinions are just my own. So if you've been to Jamaica before and you feel differently or you think that this information is incorrect, then go ahead and put that information down in the comments. Um, but you came here to see my videos. So I'm gonna tell you what I think. Okay, let's go. So the first category is why Jamaica? Why did I choose Jamaica? I'm gonna leave a tag to my first two videos, my first video where I talk about why I chose to move <laughs> to Negril for an extended period of time. This will be just like the quick and dirty. Why did I decide to move there? But basically, I was at a point in my life where I really wanted to travel. I had been working in the same job for about four years. I had traveled in the past and loved it, fell in love with traveling, but I had decided I wanted to go back to school and I kind of got stuck in life as one does. So I chose Jamaica, more specifically Negro, because I knew someone there that was very close to my family. They were married to a Jamaican and I was like, why not? They said that they had a place that I could stay and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so it took me about three to four months to wrap up everything at home, give my job enough notice and that is why I ended up in Jamaica. I chose to stay there for the length of a tourist visa, which is 90 days. Next is the accommodation. So as I mentioned before, I stayed with a close family friend so because of that I got a really good rate on accommodation but being there for three months I was able to see and meet other people and and see how much they were spending now Negril is an expensive tourist location so most people come they stay for about a week maybe they stay for a little bit longer and a lot of times they stay in all-inclusive resorts so I did not do that so I'm not going to speak to that I'm gonna speak more to renting as that is what I did and I'm going to give more of an estimate because obviously my experience is not going to be most people experience they are not going to know someone who can give them a little bit better of a rate and I don't want to speak to specifically what rate I was given as the location that I rented is able to continue to be rented out and no one else is going to get that price so I'm going to give you a scale of kind of what you should expect in terms of rent. So I would say that you should budget your rent for a month around $1,200 to $1,400. And even that is going to be around, that's pretty much COVID prices. And that's going to be pretty centrally located. Now you can go up from there and you can go down from there. There's definitely places and people that will work with you considering that a lot of the individuals that are renting these places are struggling right now as most people are with this period of time. So that is what I would say. Definitely as cases go down, you might see that prices go up. But I did have some friends where people were able to work with them in terms of how much it would cost them to stay. There are also different opportunities there if you're interested in it things like working for your accommodation or working for part of your accommodation things like that that you may be able to work out with whoever you're with but that i think is a healthy budget in terms of staying there all right if you are a digital nomad and you are interested in wi-fi that is going to be the next section here so what is it like in terms of connection in jamaica the answer spotty so sometimes your internet can be great and sometimes your internet can be very laggy 
and there's sometimes not really a rhyme or reason. Obviously, if you are in a period of time where there's a lot of rain, when there is heavy rain, you are probably going to have very spotty internet connection. But I think that this also depends on your rental location. If you are renting from a hotel or a more established Airbnb that might have better infrastructure, then I think definitely your internet could be more solid. I was in the lanes. And in the lanes means I lived in a community. So I lived, you know, off a main road, back in with other houses, other people. It was very much like a little neighborhood. So um, because I lived in the lanes, I was kind of working with the internet that they had back there. And I would say for the most part, it was pretty good. Like I would give the rating of Jamaica's internet like a B plus. If you find that internet is an issue for you, then I would definitely go and work at local hotels or uh, local restaurants or things like that. Go sit down, have a meal, have a drink, stretch it out and work on your laptop. All you have to do is ask for the Wi-Fi. They won't have it posted up anywhere. A lot of times you have to ask the server. Sometimes they'll give you a slip of paper, but I would say the majority of the time they will actually put it in for you. So that's something that you can expect to happen. Should you expect that there are times that your Wi-Fi or internet are gonna go out? Yes. While I was there, in the 90 days I was there, there were probably three or four times that I was in a blackout, like a full blackout. And that ranged from about five minutes long to about two hours long. So I would definitely kind of have a backup, whatever that would be for you. If you need to use your phone as a hotspot, or if you are Jimmy rigging a generator up or something like that. And for most people that are traveling, I'm gonna say that that's probably not something that you can do. So again, most of those blackouts were around times when it was rainy, but not always. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is transportation. So transportation, I think, was one of the most fun and interesting new parts of the culture that I got to learn. I really felt like a local taking local transportation. So this is going to be a little bit specific to Negril, although I have traveled to several different parts of Jamaica and use several different types of transportation. So I think that it will work everywhere. So there are a couple different forms of transportation that you can take. The first one is going to be a route taxi. So a route taxi is what it sounds like. It is a taxi that runs a set route. So think of it like a bus route in the United States. It follows that same route and you can hop on. And then if you get off, Anywhere on that route, it's the same cost to you. Route taxis are mostly used by locals. You don't see a lot of tourists in route taxis. I think that's specifically having to do right now with COVID because there is a, a period of time where you do need to quarantine before you can use those forms of transportation. So definitely look into that. But if you are not a Jamaican local and you're traveling to Jamaica, you may be one of the only tourists in a route taxi. So it's very important that you know the rates and that you are confident. How does the route taxi work? Well, remember in Jamaica, they drive on the left-hand side of the road. So if you are catching a taxi, think about where you're going. Once you get in right now with the current situation, you do have to wear a mask. Does everyone wear a mask? No, but everyone is supposed to wear a mask. Now they will cram as many people into this taxi as possible. So don't be surprised if you are sitting in the back seat with four people, okay? So you and three other people, four of you in the back seat, and then there's probably one person in the front seat. I've even had it where they've opened up the trunk and another two people got in the trunk. Is that legal? You know, they just be doing stuff in Jamaica, okay? Enjoy it. It's, it's different, okay? It's the culture. <laughs> so they're trying to get their money, okay? So anyway, with <laughs> the root taxi, my best tip for you, know the price. Ask a local, how much is this root? I so many times was in a taxi and would whisper to the person next to me, how much is it gonna cost to get here? 
to go where I'm trying to go, right? And then they would be like 300. And then I would have that already in my hand or in the front of my purse so that when I got out of the taxi, I wasn't messing around with change. I would just give it to the taxi driver and I would hop out. I have heard and met other visitors of Jamaica who came there and gave the taxi driver money expecting change and the taxi driver did not give them change back and they just got out thinking that's how much it was. That is not how much it was. A route taxi is a set price, so the price, get your change back. If you are nervous about it the first time getting change, what I would do is when I almost got to my stop, a little bit beforehand, I would hand the taxi driver my money and then I would say, can you change this? And then they will change it as they're driving. Is it the safest? We rock it in Jamaica, okay? They would exchange that money while they're driving, give you back the change, and then when you give them your stop, you just get out and you're good to go. If you feel like tipping, you can tip, but we travel on a budget, okay? We're trying to do this long term. I'm trying to help you do this long term. So long term, you need to know the rates, all right? You're, you're trying to fit in. You need to know the rates. Let me think if there's anything else that I need to let you know about the route taxis. Oh, another thing that you need to be aware of is the safety of route taxis. If it is a licensed taxi, it will say that all the way around the car for the most part. And a lot of times there will also be like a plate that says taxi or will have a taxi number. When you get in the car as well, it should be hanging from the rear view mirror. You'll see like a little picture that says who the taxi driver is and that they are licensed. I would recommend that you only get in licensed route taxis. That way you know that they're safe. A lot of people's side hustle is running the taxi route and they are not, not licensed as taxis. The other way that you can tell if it's a taxi, if it's a black Voxy is the um, make or model of the car, is Voxy, they call it Voxy bus. A lot of them drive this Voxy bus, it's like a bigger, car that's a trademark of a, a route taxi so that's another way too that you know that you're getting in the correct car but we'll go in next to a chartered taxi or chartered car so what this means is you're basically paying someone to take you to several different places so this is obviously going to be the more expensive option so it is a door-to-door -door service for you if you want to go several different places and you want one person to take you to all those different places you can have someone that will do that for you you often can find them in the place where the taxis park which is in the center of town in negril also you can find them by high low which which is the local grocery store. They'll be sitting a lot of times in the parking lot of Hilo asking if you need to be taken around. They will often charge about a thousand Jamaican dollars and up, which is around nine or ten dollars and up. You could be paying something like 10, 20, 30 dollars, depending on how long they're taking you and depending on how far you're asking them to go. You can choose to do that. I never chose to do that because um, budget and like and no too expensive too expensive for me but you can definitely fit that in especially if you're looking to go to a place that's further away but wouldn't be on a normal bus route or on a route taxi and you want to go door to door so the next option is going to be just the regular bus i took the regular bus one time and i took it from negril up to a place called falmouth and then back which is past Montego Bay. What I love about the bus is it is very economical. It costs hardly anything. And we went a long way. From the grill to Montego Bay is about an hour bus ride. And we probably went an additional hour up from that. The cost of that was 1,860 Jamaican dollars, which is approximately this much money to go four hours round trip. So taking the bus is an excellent option. What I will say about the bus is, just like the Route Taxi, you are crammed in. And I mean crammed. I mean, if the bus was ever to roll, good luck to you. I wish you the best. I mean, emergency exit where? The bus has rows of seats just like a regular bus if you're from the united states so think of a regular bus where it has rows of seats on both sides where you would fit two people on each side and then the middle 
is also able to fit two people in the middle. And that goes from the very back of the bus all the way up to the front of the bus where the bus driver is sitting and over from where he's sitting. Like there is absolutely no room, which means if someone from the back of the bus needs to get off along the way, everyone in the middle needs to get out, leave the bus, the person leaves the bus, and then everyone will get back in and put the middle seats down and sit down. It's not the most comfortable journey, but it is a great way to get around. It's super cost effective, and it's definitely a cultural experience. During COVID, would I recommend it? I did it, almost everyone had masks on. You might not wanna risk it, but definitely if you need to get a really long way away and you don't want to charter someone to take you there, you you can't find anything better. Unless you know someone, you can't find anything better. And even that, you might pay more in gas than you would pay to get on the bus, so. If you've watched my vlogs, you've seen that most of the time, if I'm getting around, if I'm not in a taxi, I'm on my bike. I had a little pink Schwinn bike that I would ride around town. I loved it. And people would know me from that bike, so that was kind of cool. Bike riding in Jamaica, in the grill, I felt was safe. Adjacent. If you are planning on riding or renting a bike, there's a lot of people you can rent a bike from. I recommend renting it from a Rasta. And by Rasta, I mean like a local Jamaican in the town who has a bike. If you're renting it from a local Jamaican, it's probably going to be much cheaper than renting it from a shop. And then you'll pay by the month, or if you're only gonna be there for a couple weeks, pay by the amount of time that you're going to be there. Some things that you wanna remember, again, left side of the road, okay? Left is right. <laughs> if you have any limitations in terms of like eyesight, hearing, I would potentially not ride a bike. I had to use all my senses when I was riding a bike. This was kind of important. Like you need to listen for cars because right of way, no. <laughs> No, there is no right of way. The cars have the right of way. They are not going to stop for you and they will clip you if you are not over enough on the side of the road. So when you hear a car coming, get to the side. Like I mean, to the shoulder, okay? Like fully move over, put your elbows in. <laughs> Another thing to be aware of is the lighting situation and the roads and the docks. Okay, so there might be some things to consider when you're riding a bike. First, get over to the side make sure you're listening two is that the roads are not always in the best condition so just be aware of that i would say for the most part definitely in the grill because it is a big tourist city it's manageable the other one is going to be the lighting i tried never to ride my bike after the sun went down i had about 30 minutes from when the sun went down which from september to december is around 5 30. i was on my way home because it starts to get dark and it starts to get dark quick a lot of times even on the main roads there's not going to be a lot of light especially once the sun goes down because a lot of the restaurants and bars and things are closing at that time due to the current situation we're in. And then the fourth consideration for riding your bike are dogs. I had something I developed called a dog rock. And this is not something I created, so I'm not gonna give credit for that. What I mean is I put it in my bike, okay? I had a dog rock in the bike. Jamaicans will tell you, they'll tell you on day one, if you see a dog and it's coming towards you, pick up a rock and act like you're gonna throw it at them. If it's really coming towards you, you might, I mean, throw it at them. I had at least three situations where I got attacked by a dog on my bike. So after a while, you, you, um, you bring a rock with you on your bike because, um, yeah, dogs are not afraid of you mess you up for real in the last couple ones scooters and cars this would be if you know someone you know someone who has a car or you know someone who has a scooter or a motorcycle then obviously you can get around that way there are also people who will want to give you rides on their personal scooter bike car this kind of goes back to what i was talking about before i don't think it's the safest thing to do did i do it while i was there you know, I was out in the open air. Just don't do maybe what I did. Keep into consideration that it is an option for you. It's probably gonna cost you a little bit more than a root taxi, but it's definitely gonna cost you less than a chartered uh, taxi. So, another option. Exchange of money is going to happen in cash. Bring an umbrella, mashed potatoes, fries, hash brown, maybe even a lot of potatoes. 
no pants, all the bikinis. 